Okay, I'm going to call this one the little car that wouldn't. And uh, I'll explain as I go along, but let me tell you, on this AMT model, nothing has gone right from start to finish. It just, nothing fit, uh, parts broken, just you name it, and it's been there. Uh, I'll give you one example. The interior, I had it in and out. I don't know how many times to make sure that it fit right. And I had to make adjustments in order to get it to fit. Okay? I, when I put the windows in, the rear window and the windshield, I, the rear window I made it my own. The windshield is the, the factory windshield. I put it at the only place that it would go to fit this opening. Down here on the cow, it it uh, is fitting flush, and it's all the way against against the roof up here. But when I went and put the interior in, the interior is now setting low because the windshield would not let it go in the way it should, up even in flush with the doors. Another thing. The way they got the hinge system set up on this is, is totally screwed up. You can lift the hood, but not very much. It won't clear here because of the way they got this set up. Uh, I, I wish I had foresaw that and, and done something different. Another thing, they had the grill. It fit way outside of this and was much taller. I had to sand it down to fit in the hole, okay? The hood was too long. And it set way high. It's still a little bit high right there now, but it was much higher before. So I had to sand it off. It had the molding on the hood, and I completely sanded it off. And I reinstalled it by using uh, this half round uh, styrene that I had and I wish now that I would have took that and put it all the way around this grill opening but I already had the car painted and everything and uh, I just didn't do it but that would have made it look like it was uh, more French in if you know what I mean these headlights they're totally wrong they're, they they stick out way too far for the 55 they didn't they didn't set like that this is the bumper let me see my license plates crooked while it's drying this is the bumper that was broke okay and it had very rough chrome on it so I was sanded it smooth and I thought well I'll, I'll spray it with some uh, chrome paint well, this is the way it turned out. I'm not happy with that. Uh, I wish I could have got another bumper for it, but it didn't, so that's where we're at. Let me uh, turn it around here, show you the other side. It's the other side. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, now, I'm waiting for the paint to completely cure. I, I, I like my paint hard and then I'll sand the finish coat and buff it and then I'll attempt to put on the uh, chrome tin foil on the moldings, you know, around the windows, drip rail, and etc. Uh, I will try to show you a picture of the interior because I've got slides of that. Uh, uh, what was accomplished on it and everything and you really can't see in all that well. I did make leg pipes to put on it just to make the stance look a little bit lower. I'm not uh, I'm fairly happy with the, the way it's, I've got it set and it took me a while to get it that way and get it set with all four feet on the ground. Okay so that's, the, that's where that's at. 
It's turning on around here. This rear bumper, I put it on the way they they uh, had it intended to be. It set way back too far. Uh, there was a space in, in between here. I mean, it sets so far back. And you see what I'm talking about, bad chrome. You can see that heavy line down through there. Well, there you go. You're stuck with it, okay? Uh, so, I shaved everything down. I even uh, shortened the frame rail so I could push the bumper in as close to the body as I could get it. When I turned Casper into a uh, more or less a El Camino, that's one of the things they used to like to do on these models because they had the perfect lines for it. Uh, I was using the rear window from the tailgate for the opening here. Well, it just didn't look right. Uh, it wasn't wide enough. And it just it just didn't look right. So I made the opening wider. Uh, I made my own moldings to go around out of the half round. Okay. And uh, so that's what I did there. This you've probably seen before. I decided to stripe it. Uh, Got it working fairly well. Now back on this tailgate, I about sanded the whole edges off off of this thing in order to get it to fit in the hole. It wasn't. It wouldn't even fit in the hole. And uh, uh, also, when I was trying to install it in the in the clips. And I was trying to be as careful as I could be. I broke one of the retainers off the hell that lets this hinge. So I just went ahead and broke the other one off. I've got an idea too of how I can fix it back using fine wire and it will work but really what I would have liked to have done I would like for it to open up like a door. You know safe open from this side out and uh, I'll show you why here in a minute also some more areas that is not right you see see these dimples there well I didn't try to fix them because I, I just didn't I just didn't want to fool with it I, I've been so aggravated with this thing it's, it's just it just got to me but I do want to show you I'm gonna pull the I'm gonna pull it loose and turn it around so you see it. You see, see the license in place there? Big Boss Jim, 1955, Kentucky. Also got one on the front. I forgot to mention that. But I put speakers in the, in the same. I thought, well, you know, I'll let the tailgate down. Let the tailgate down. Party time. Uh, also, you see the wood floor that I put in there. I gotta show you this. Whoops. Can you see my stereo system in there? Huh? Speakers on both sides. There's the power unit. Now, I'm gonna make a beer cooler and put in there. Probably a case of case of beer. Maybe a couple other things, I don't know. Just to spoof it up a little bit. That's a leather texture on, on, on this, if you're wondering why it's a different color. I used a dark gray leather. But that's where that's at. Let me stick my tailgate back on there before I drop it and step on it. Which I would probably do. I feel like stepping on a whole model. Anyway, that's where it's at. That's Casper. 
Uh, as I mentioned, I took off the door handles, I took off all the name badges, left the hood shaved, took off the Chevrolet emblem on the front, put the leg pipes on. I don't know. If I had to try to open these doors up, I, this this thing would have fell apart. That, that just and uh, I might mention. <clears throat> I thought it was just me. I looked it up on YouTube, and there's another gentleman built the same exact model, and he'd built quite a few cars. He's got a, uh, I don't know, 150 videos up uh, of models that he's done, and he built this exact same car, except he didn't chop the top on it or cut the top off of it. Uh, he left it as a as a nomad wagon, and he said the same thing. He said it, it was just a total mess from start to finish. And like he said, he said I've got it looking pretty decent, but it is not a showpiece, and it is not. It's not a showpiece. It's just too many problems with it. And uh, another thing. Uh, I mentioned to you before I, I was really wanting a 56 and I couldn't find one. Well, I did find one uh, and it's coming in the mail. should be here in a day or two from California. And uh, the reason I bought it, I want to compare it. It's a Revell. I want to compare it with this thing, this AMT, which is, to me, is junk absolute junk and I want to compare them I wasn't going to buy another Nomad I would like to have a 56 convertible because I had a 56 convertible but uh, that's a, that's another time but I want to compare the two companies the two models and just see you know and I don't think I went wrong uh, doing that because it, it is just, you know, there's just too much wrong with this model. But anyhow, that's where I'm at with it at the moment. Like I said, I'm going to let it sit for a while, make sure the paint is thoroughly dry. I like to paint hard, and then uh, finish sanding and uh, buff it out if possible to get more of a gloss. And then I'm going to attempt to do the. Uh, bare metal foil uh, I haven't had a whole lot of success with that either and uh, so that's that's where we're at with the car oh, front license plate 55 Nomad historical and then boy this one is too you know that's should have been at the Battle of Gettysburg couldn't be no more beat up than what it is but that's it. I can't help it. I still like the style of it. Uh, it's just a shame it's the type uh, a piece of junk that it is. So that's it. Stay tuned. I will have some slides up at the end of the uh, at the end of this video, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and uh, uh, if, hey, if you have any suggestions, comments, you know, I don't care if they're good, they're bad, or what. Uh, I'm just disgusted with this models. Uh, this model, not the models. And uh, hopefully uh, after this, I can get my truck, I got to get it cleaned up, and uh, the paint off of it and uh, get started back on it. At least it, you know, it uh, things fit the way it's supposed to on that. It just my fault. I rushed the paint on it too much, and uh, I, I, I'm going to do it differently. But uh, I'll take my time on it this time. Of course, I rushed the paint on this one too, so I've got a couple problems with it. But anyhow, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, like I said leave comments you know uh, or whatever criticism I don't care at this stage with that model 
and uh, well, I'm quite sure there's probably somebody out there that's built it and no problem but I think it's an old kit from the 90's and uh, I guess they ain't just worms good as what they are nowadays but okay thanks guys uh, this is Big Boss Jim I'll be signing off and uh, you all have a good one and take care of yourselves bye bye